Today, the Scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Uh, I want to try out a couple of ideas on you that I've had about this. So they're not completely formed. There's more of a meditation than sort of eternal verities to take away and structure your life around. But uh, things that I find fascinating in that expression, today, these, these things, have, this, this Scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So the first that I want to talk about is, today, this Scripture has been fulfilled. I mean, it has and it hasn't. They're doing what we're doing. They're, they're nice people sitting in church, hearing the Word of God proclaimed. I certainly don't want to suggest that there's anything wrong with that. If we don't gather to worship together, how will we ever be able to assign appropriate value to everything else that we do in our lives? How will we even understand what it is that we do in the rest of our lives? So, clearly, there was a reason why they came together, and it was important but if you look at what Jesus is saying, the things that he's talking about doing, proclaiming good news to the poor, release to the captives, returning sight to the blind, they weren't doing that stuff in that moment. In fact, that was really what he had been doing all the time before he got there and indeed was going to continue to do after he left. It's what he did two streets down on the corner when he was walking to the synagogue there that morning. And yet, I, I wonder what, what they made of that, whether in fact, y you may know that the, the, the difficulty with this story is that almost as soon as we end the passage that we heard this morning, they all get mad at him and try to run him out of town, partly because they don't seem to get what he's saying and they don't seem to want to believe what he's saying. I wonder if part of that is because when they hear him talking about these things, they're thinking, well, are we doing those things? Because the truth is, if all we do is this part, gather to worship and hear, not much is going to happen in the world unless we take those things out of here and do them. How much are we proclaiming good news to the poor, release to captives, sight to the blind, bringing those things into the world, the, the sort of tangible, if you will, virtues of, of, of justice and mercy and healing and reconciliation? <clears throat> So they are fulfilled only to the extent that we hear them and then take them and do something with them. That, I think, was a hard message for them, and it's a hard message for us because sometimes it's a whole lot more comfortable to sit and listen than it is to get up and go do. So I would, it's not entirely surprising that they get angry with him and don't want to hear any more from him, this guy who's supposed to be from their hometown whom they already know. So, fulfilled in your hearing is perhaps a challenge to us as much as it was to them. The second piece is that in your hearing part, fulfilled in your hearing. Now, we know realistically what that means when the translation says that. It's, you, you know it now because I just told it to you. But I wonder if maybe there's more hidden in it than just that. You know that in Judeo-Christian thought, down through the centuries, certainly until almost modern times, we have had a very clear understanding that the Word of God has creative power. If you read Genesis, God speaks the universe into being. Let there be light. There's something about the speaking of these words, the speaking of justice, the speaking of mercy, the speaking of healing and restoration that brings them into being. I wonder if there's also something about that in the hearing of them. If when the Word of God, Jesus, come among us, speaks these words into our ears and into our hearts, there is a beginning of making them happen in us and through us. So whether being fulfilled in our hearing is also partly about the way that God continues to create these things in each one of our souls and through us, as I said in the first part, bringing them into, brings them into the world, brings them into being, actualizes them in the way that we try to do those things among the people we meet among the people we care for, among the people we care about. 
So perhaps there's also a, a prediction in this. Not simply that this has been said and therefore now you know it, but rather it has, the seed has been planted. Each one of us has been uh, made ready in some way to do these things by the fact that God has created this reality in each one of us simply by our hearing these words that are powerful, words that are creative, words that make something happen as much as they describe something that is already happening. So once again, you can see why they would get all stirred up. You can see why this might have been something that created conflict in them, that new energy that had been placed in their hearts. I wonder how often we come to church and we say these things in nice church voice and then go away and they have no effect on us. You know, maybe they have been fulfilled in our hearing as well. Maybe today we will be stirred up to go out and do something about them. Amen.